welcome to Mosaic Church this morning. Would you get up to your feet with us as we worship together? It's exciting to see you. If you're online watching, we encourage you as well to get excited to get involved. We sing of grace and we sing of mercy and all that our God has done for us. We sing this together in truth. Come on, let's say shown me grace you've lifted my shame and draw me with loving kindness you've washed whiter than snow yeah you have redeemed and made me whole say grace in grace you've shown me grace you've lifted my shame Draw me with loving kindness and washed whiter than snow. Yeah, you have redeemed and made me own. Do you say this? Huh? Say, Jesus, you have won me. You have broken every chain with love and mercy. You have triumphed over death and you are worthy of glory and praise. Do you believe that? He is worthy, ain't that? His love, if you show me love, leaving your throne, but bleeding and dying on a cross, that wonderful cross. That took all my guilt and sin away. We say, Oh Jesus, you have wanted me. You have broken every chain with love and mercy. You have triumphed over death. desire is that what happens in here would be taken outside of you that the world would experience the love of Jesus Christ amen so we shout it out as loud as we can we lift it up for the world needs to know that God is alive and Jesus saves amen would you say this with me close shout it out and lift up one voice come on give a sing it out until We sing again. Yeah. 
Church, do you believe that he is good? I'm excited to sing this new song. And I want to just give you a precursor. We say, is he good? We say, is he God? Because he is good God Almighty. Amen? It sounds like this. I'll just sing it for you. I want you to kind of pick it up. You put the lyrics up. It's Lord God Almighty, I hope you find me. That's the part. I want you guys to, to grasp this. It says, Good God Almighty, I hope you'll find me. Praise your name no matter what comes. Because I know where I'd be without your mercy. So I keep praising your name. The top of my lungs. Tell me, is he good? Tell me, is he God? He is a good God Almighty. Tell me, is he good? Tell me, is he God? He is a good God Almighty. Amen. Let's try this together. Can we try this together? Let's do this. Come on. The truth. I can't count the times I've called you some broken night you showed up and patched me up like you do every time i get amnesia i forget that you keep coming around there ain't no way you'll ever let me down here we go good god almighty i hope you'll find me raising your name on forever that your mercy never stops so why would i assume you'll be somebody that you're not the sun in the morning i know you're gonna be there every day so what on earth would make me be afraid say this come on good god almighty yeah. Jesus when the sun goes down, 
Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus when the sun goes down. You are good.
if you care He's moving on the wind The dawn is breaking But lift your eyes to see it It's better than you dream And everything you've lost Love's returning Love's returning Love's returning Love's returning The way of love Everything we've lost. Not some things, everything. You're returning, God. In our mind, our spirit, our souls, God. You're returning. You're making all things new. We're walking in that faith today, Father. That we're there was no way you're making a way. Where there was no way you are making a way. Because you're surrounding us. And we stand on that today, God. Love is returning. Love is returning. Love is returning. Are you with me, church? Love is returning. Father, I just know there are people in here that need to hear that today. Love's return. That no matter how dark the night, right now, dawn is breaking in this place. Lives are being changed. Hope is entering in. Now we're going to invite our prayer team to the side of the stage. If you need hope today, if you need prayer, we want you to know that we believe that. We believe that mountains can move today. We believe that miracles happen today. If you need a breakthrough today, we believe it can happen right now. Right now, today. Are you with me? That we have the audacity to believe that God is who he says he is and that he'll do what he says he will do. Amen. And if you're just not in that place right now, but, but you know you've got something happening and you know you need somebody to pray with you and pray over you that's what these people are here for they believe it they are they're bold they believe that your god will do what he says he will do and if you need that today you can come now
Touching every heart, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Come on, sing it. You are here. Turn You believe that today? Come on. Come on. Sing it. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. You never stop.
the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Sing that again. Cause you are way make miracle work, promise keep light. You are way make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. It's who you are. Hey, we worship you, God. We worship you, God. Lift a shout of praise in this place. He is who he says he is, and he will do what he says he'll do. Are you excited to be here today? We are so excited that you're here. Turn around to somebody, give them an air high five, and welcome them. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mosaic Church OKC. My name is Mark Ryan. I'm one of the pastors here. Whether you are here in person or watching online, we want you to know that we are excited that you're here with us. We are a church of passionate people going after the heart of Jesus. Here you will experience the grace, love, and mercy of God as we walk through this journey together. We believe that you are here or online watching right now for a purpose, and we are believing that your life will be forever changed. If you're joining us for the first time in person or online, we want to say welcome. We are so happy that you're here with us, and we want to connect with you. Please text the word welcome to 405-500-1310 and we'll send a digital connection card right to your phone. If you're joining us online, we want to encourage you to engage. We want you to comment, like, and share. Let us know that you're here so that we can be praying with you during the experience. Also, make sure to share it with your friends so they can experience Mosaic right along with you. We have three groups that meet each month. Due to Memorial Day weekend in May, the dates have changed slightly, so make sure to get your calendars ready. The first one is the 50 and Over Fellowship. This group will meet on Friday, May 21st at 6.30 p.m. Our teen group will also meet on that same night, Friday, May 21st at 6.30. This is a great group for any students that are 12 years or older. Additionally, our men's breakfast will meet at 9 a.m. on Saturday, May 22nd. Mark your calendars now for our upcoming worship night. It'll be on Tuesday, May 11th at 7 p.m. This will be an incredible night of experiencing and lifting high the name of Jesus. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. Please make sure to follow us on Facebook for more news and events or visit mosaicokc.church for more information. That's it for now. We hope that you've come expectant for what God's going to do in your life. Get ready for a life-changing message. Good morning, everyone. Stand with me if you would. Welcome all of you watching online. I believe that the message today that you're going to hear is going to be life-changing. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what the Bible says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God, and I boldly confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and I'll never be the same again. Never, 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 in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Um, before I start preaching, I want to remind you of a few things, uh, which my precious wife uh, reminded me I should do, uh, is if you want to be uh, a member of of Mosaic, you can text the word member to 405 500 1310. And last weekend, we had a very successful servant leader slash volunteer uh, lunch, and we added a lot of people. And uh, so, if you want to serve and be a part of the, one of the teams uh, from the parking lot to greeting to ushering to prayer uh, to audio, video, whatever it might be that you have an interest in. Text the, the word serve to the same number, 405 1310 um, It's been my experience as a church leader that uh, people who serve uh, are people who stay. People who serve are people who are committed. 
Now, it doesn't mean that you're not committed to attending and all that, but I'm just saying it's so much easier to stay connected when you connect yourself to the vision of the house. So, no condemnation to those of you who are not currently serving, but we certainly want you to understand that uh, the growth of any given church uh, it is dependent upon those who are willing to serve those who come and help the church grow. So, not that that's our pursuit. Our pursuit is to glorify God and minister to one another. And let me tell you something. If you go to a good restaurant and you eat great food and you have great service, they don't have to tell you to go tell somebody. <laughs> you just say, man, it was so good. Where are you eating lately? You know, you're now on Facebook, where's a good place to eat? Or, you know, where's a good place to go to church? So easy nowadays. So, anyway, I thought I'd bring that to you. I'm going to begin a series uh, this month entitled Gratitude. Um, we're a year or so out from the beginning of one of the most difficult times in American history. And during that time, uh, and even still today, there are a lot of people still complaining about things. And uh, there are things that need to be addressed. But how many of you know you can address things without complaining? You know, and, and so I just want us to set our hearts in the right direction so that we can set our course to live an abundant life. People who are annoyed, people who are frustrated, uh, people who are confused, never live the full life that Jesus paid for us to live. I believe that gratitude may be, uh, right along with love, one of the, the greatest ways to create the abundant life. It's to be grateful. And I hear people, I don't have anything to be grateful for. Are you breathing? Are you saved? Do you have the potential to be saved? Then you have a whole lot to be grateful for. It's so easy if you're an A-type personality to find all the problems. In fact, you're gifted to find the problems. It's not wrong that you find them, but how you address those problems may be what's wrong. So, People who are willing to grow are people who are willing to learn. A dear friend of mine, when he's asked, uh, or a dear friend, he's a dear acquaintance, he, when he's asked what he does for a living, he simply says, I'm a learner. They say, no, what do you do for your profession? He said, I'm a learner. And so prayerfully, uh, gratitude will open that door. And you say, well, how do I show gratitude? Well, there are quite a few ways just off the top of my head. One is uh, through helping somebody works, if you will. Uh, another one is, is through worship, being grateful to God. Another one is through giving gifts to people and, and just saying, I appreciate you. Another one is words, affirming people, telling them they're wonderful. That's communicating gratitude. Now, I know in a world that's so fast-paced and in a world that continually feeds the victim mentality inside of our country, it's very difficult to shake off the residue of everything that we hear on television and social media. So today, hopefully, <clears throat> we can dust some of that off. So here, <clears throat> here are some quotes. I want to say thank you to all the people who walked into my life and made it outstanding. And all the people who walked out of my life and made it fantastic. See, sometimes you complain when somebody walks out of your life instead of saying, thank you, Lord. My life is now fantastic. You don't need to be around people who are negative, always being critical, pointing out every problem they see. I remember one time uh, I had a bunch of golf carts, which, by the way, we have a golf cart now <laughs> to cart people around. Okay. So you, yeah, we're really out of the chute now. We're in the race. And I remember that, you know, we had a lot of drivers, and they were the long golf carts, and somebody came running into me one Sunday before service and said, you know, we had a young man run into two cars, and they were all uptight. And I said, well, get the phone numbers, and let's pay for the cars. I'm just grateful he was working. <laughs> now, that would not be me by my own human nature. That's a God nature that I just thought, you know, he's doing the best he somebody that would rail him, maybe even cuss him out if he tends mosaic. Um, actually, any church I'd be a part of, I guess that's possible. 
We have a knack for attracting all kinds of people, and I like that. But the reality is we all can be grateful. In other words, we can't have all we want. We ought to be thankful we don't get what we deserve. I don't have all I want, but I'm sure thankful God didn't allow me to what I deserve. The hardest arithmetic to master is that which enables us to count our blessings. Be grateful. I'm thankful for laughter except when it comes out of my nose. It's been a long time. But as a kid, that happened a lot. Now, this one will be a little bit politically incorrect, I'm sure. The thing I'm most grateful for right now is elastic weight bands, waistbands. Yeah, I just got to tell you guys something. Yoga pants were the worst thing to ever come out there. Both sides, nobody should wear them. <laughs> I'm just kidding, kind of. Speaking of elastic waistbands. If a, fe- if a fellow isn't thankful for what he's got, he isn't likely to be thankful for what he's going to get. There's always something to be thankful for. If you can't pay your bills, you can be thankful you're not one of your creditors. Because <laughs> I think that'd be harder having to call somebody and say, you owe us money and we're coming after you. Be thankful you're not one of the people that you owe money to. Glenn Beck says, I can multitask like crazy. I'm riddled with ADD, a blessing and a curse. And, you know, I, I don't know how many of you even think about this. I know A-type people, or at least some A-type people who aren't narcissists, but uh, <laughs> I look at my life and I go, God, why did you make me this way? Any of you ever do that? I see stuff that I don't want to see. I hear things I don't want to hear. It's like I'm always, you know, on edge. I'm of, of looking around at stuff, making sure things are working right. And, you know, I think it drives some people crazy, including myself. Instead of just walking in and saying, I'm thankful. You know, we're so absolutely Americanized. And I love our country, but I've preached all over the world. I've preached on, in tents in South Africa, under tents with mobile sound systems. And, and you know, it's just a huge tent. And, and we come here, the, if the temperature's not quite right, the, the sound levels aren't quite what we want, you know, we have this tendency to want to wanna fix everything, and you can't fix everything. If you have kids, you know you cannot fix everything. And so I'm not suggesting that we become apathetic, but what I'm suggesting is that in the moment that you want to get mean, begin to think about something you can be grateful for. Because if, if any of your kids are like most of the kids I pastored when I was a youth pastor their rooms are a mess instead of looking at the rooms I'm just so thankful for little Johnny but look at his room no I want to look at Johnny I want to be thankful I'm so thankful for the mess I have a friend who lost his one of his uh, three children when he was 17 years old in a single car accident I can promise you if he had him back today he wouldn't even care what his room looked like But see, oftentimes we don't think that way until we're forced to think that way. We need to learn to think this way without tragedy, without chaos, because gratitude will prevent chaos. And some of you, all your marriage needs, all the tune-up it needs is for you every day to be grateful for your spouse. Say, yeah, but he's an idiot today, and he's been an idiot all week. I don't know what's wrong with him. Well, you're probably wrong with him, (laughs) and vice versa. Every day when we wake up, I look at Susan, and I say, you are absolutely beautiful. You will not be prettier than this all day long. And she's got a headload of hair. And she says, look at my hair. And I said, honey, I call that sexy. (laughs) And she says, I call it messy. I said, we're going to go with sexy. 
You see what I'm saying? We laugh and you like it and, and some of you will do it with humor, but the reality is I mean it. I'm the only one that gets to see her like this. That makes me privileged. It makes me grateful. None of y'all will ever get to see it, trust me, because she takes care of business. If you can't be content with what you've received, be thankful for what you've escaped. Just a few thoughts before I open the Bible. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15. And I, I put these words down. Don't ever waste a setback. Don't ever waste a mistake. Don't waste it. A mistake is nothing more than a platform for opportunity. You can do something better. You made that mistake, now you know. See, most people in our world don't want people to make mistakes because we have photo editing. And so we photo edit our lives on social media, but you can't do that in real life. The mess looks like a mess. We expect perfection. And there is no such thing except Christ himself. So some of you don't even get this because you really don't care. Your car hasn't been washed in three years, and you have 17 water bottles in it on the floor, under the seat, you don't care. And I'm okay with that. So maybe I'm not addressing you right now, but people like moi, I have to intentionally go, quit looking at all the things that could be fixed, could be done, and start being grateful for the things that you already have. Now, it doesn't mean you don't fix those things, but gratitude is the platform for anything great. Otherwise, it won't be great because you won't be grateful for it. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 says, Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong. If you're witty and you're gifted with sarcasm and somebody says something sideways to you, oh my goodness, your tongue is... I have the gift. And I have had to learn to bridle that gift. I mean, my tongue by nature is a dagger, sharp. Don't like it, but it works when it works right. When it's working right, it's good. When it works bad, it's not good. Goes on to say, but always try to be kind to each other and to everyone else. Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ. So give thanks in all circumstances. No matter what's going on around you, don't let it get in you. Because when it gets in you, it becomes you. And it's unbecoming to become you when that gets in you. Trust me, as a pastor, I preach to thousands and tens of thousands of people, and, and, and there are some people you can preach the best sermon of your life, and somebody will find something wrong with it. It's like, I, I'm just doing the best I can. Could you at least be grateful that I tried? And I wouldn't even mind if somebody come up and said, you know, pastor, that really stunk today, but thanks for trying. Now, trust me, I'm not really excited about that, but, but it would be better than just say you stunk today. If your wife doesn't cook a good meal, you don't want to lie. You know, you, you need a chainsaw to cut the beef, but you can at least look, honey, I just want to thank you for the effort you put into this. Was it good? Again, let me just thank you for the effort that you put into this meal. Do you see what I'm saying? You're not lying. You're just finding something good to say that's true. And you can always look at somebody and say, thank you for being my friend. Thank you for trying. Thank you for doing your best. Gratitude is absolutely essential as Christians that we communicate to the world. 
I, I went uh, to a <laughs> eat yesterday afternoon, and, and I, I'm standing in line at this restaurant, and, and you order at the counter, and there's only myself, and there's a guy in front of me, and the girl that was behind the counter, early 20s, and I, I, I walk up. The reason I know is I'm, I'm standing about five, oh, hold it, six feet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Dear God, if I'm five feet, I'm COVID risk. And so I'm standing back, and I hear this guy talking to the girl behind the counter. And, you know, I could tell he's working on it. You know what I'm saying? I knew where he was going. And finally, right before he paid, he said, well, do you have a boyfriend? And she just so graciously said, yes, I do. And so when I went to the counter, I I smiled, and I said, I heard what was going on. I said, that was really great. You protected your boyfriend. I just wanted to affirm her. I just wanted to let her know I was grateful how she handled it. She didn't, I mean, it had to be embarrassing. I, I think he turned around and saw me and went, oh, because she shut him down. I was proud of him for the courage, but I was laughing too hard to say anything. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. But the reality is, I just, I just appreciated her and, and, and was grateful, showed thanksgiving. I'm not boasting. I'm just saying I could have let, said nothing, but I knew I ordered a cup of soup. When she came out, it was a bowl. It was like Jesus was in the kitchen. He's expanded my order, and I didn't have to pay for it. Sometimes if you're just grateful for people and you're nice to people, they do things that you don't expect because you sowed a seed of gratitude, thanksgiving, and appreciation to their hearts. So just try this, because as a pastor, Jesse will tell you, there's probably not a week goes by, it's too loud, it's too soft, it's too cold, it's too hot, it's too, you know, you kind of go, please, people, just come into church and be glad you're here. I mean, I'm preaching in Africa, in the heat, under a tent, there's no air conditioning, it's packed, and you never know it, the people didn't even act like, they just worshiping God. Loving Jesus because they're like, we get to be in church. Well, in America, you got to have lights, camera, action. And, and I'm not against these things, but these are not the reasons we're here. We're here to worship God. Deal with it for an hour because I promise you, you've been in places a lot longer than you've been in church and didn't say a stinking word. Be grateful. Be grateful. Write me a letter. Give Jesse money. <laughs> Prisons are open again. We got to get him in there saving souls. Be grateful. Before I start, I, I, I got to be careful when you're preaching. I, I'm preparing this message this week, getting ready for it. And it's like this morning I got up and I thought, you know what? I'm so grateful for all of you. I just, I just began to think how absolutely wonderful all of you are and I I thought you know I just I just need to make sure that this is not just a sermon this is a lifestyle folks this is not a message that you go that's a good message or I'm glad I preached that message but man when's the last time you just went and told somebody I'm so thankful for you if you're married you need to wake up every morning and go to bed every night and say I am grateful for you For two human beings to sleep in the same bed and not kill one another over a period of time is nothing short of miraculous. It's a Red Sea miracle. All those stories are not true if you ask the Bobbits. Anyway, so... (laughs) You can research it if you want. It's a true story. I didn't say anything off color. I just told you a fact that was in the news everywhere. But I'm going to tell you, you don't have to risk worrying about a butcher knife if you tell her I love you and you look beautiful. Yeah, when you go to bed at night, you want to know how to sleep sweet? You don't need an Ambien. You need gratitude. (laughs) 
sorry guys, I just seems like I have to say something every week that they go, did he really say that? <laughs> yeah, he did. Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Next week's Mother's Day, next Sunday. Now, I won't have a mother anymore to say I'm so thankful for you, Mom. I wish I did. And I can promise you, Hallmark cannot create a card that will express your love better than saying, Mom, thanks for all you've done for me. Instead, somebody will convince you that your mama spanked you too many times. No, you never got spanked enough. Matter of fact, I'd be an advocate of getting up every day and welcoming all the kids in the kitchen. Bend over, we're going to get this out of the way right now. Because I know you're going to jack up today, and if I spare the rod, I hate the child, I want you to know how much I love you today. Bend over. Now, you know I'm kidding, but I'm just saying. Somebody convinced you that your mom or dad was bad. And well, until you've been a mom and dad, and until you've raised kids to be really old, you don't know how hard that really is. It always cracks me up when people who've never had kids tell you how to raise yours. I want to knock them into next year. Actually, there are times I want to knock them into the next decade. It's like, you don't talk to me about having kids. I'm going to go get a slew of them and bring them to your house like cats. Then you tell me how to raise those suckers. You'll be out and done in 12 hours. You'll be shipping them home. It's not easy. I know as a parent, every kid thinks they're going to do better than their dad. <laughs> well, I'm not going to do what my dad did. Yeah, you are. You might do it in a little more class, and you might do it more politely. But if you're going to raise kids, there are just certain things that are consistent. I'm not talking about abuse or being hard. I'm just simply saying, I used to tell my kids all the time, nothing good happens after midnight. I'm beginning to think that might be 10 o'clock now. <laughs> the world's gotten a little more cray-cray. <sighs> I'm just trying to find an exit because <laughs> this is like page one right here. So you can see this is going to be one of those fun series. Because gratitude is not something that comes natural to us. It's really not. Because our human nature is a fallen nature. And typically, we always try to make sure we're first. I'm going to be first. I want to challenge you just a couple of things. Number one, think about this. When you go to a grocery store and you're in line... And, and you got a basket full, and somebody's got 10 items behind you, won't you let them in front of you? It'll freak them out, and they'll think that you're up to something. I must tell you, kindness freaks this world out. Okay, what do you want? <laughs> Nothing. I just, I'm just thankful we're here, and I'm in line, but you got to you know. I love the pay it forward thing. I used to go to Starbucks until they started charging fifteen ninety eight for a cup of coffee. And then I decided I could brew my own. Matter of fact, I started to grow coffee beans like they grow weed. <laughs> thought if they can grow weed at home, I can grow some coffee beans. Crush them and no, I'm just kidding. I think it's so funny how much you have to pay. You know what I'm saying? I gave some people $10 gift cards and I thought well, that'll get you a, a, a cake pop. <laughs> you have to buy your own cup of coffee. I got you a cake pop, $9.99 plus tax. Be grateful. Being grateful to God for all the blessings is one of the most distinctive marks of a true Christian. A heart that is attuned to God naturally pours out thanksgiving. This is what years ago I learned and you may not agree with it, but it changed my life. 
Once I ask God for something, the next day I start thanking him for it. Why? Because God doesn't have some timers or all timers. He remembers everything. So if I ask God for something today, if tomorrow comes, he'll remember it. So what I do now, and there are things I've been thanking him for for 10 years. (laughs) They haven't come true yet, but they will. And you know what? Gratitude keeps me from begging and getting annoyed. So what you do is say, God, I just thank you that, that, that you, you, you're giving me this, or you're doing this. It's in alignment with the Word. It's not, I'm not creating, you know, I'm not asking to own Disneyland or anything. I'm just getting thankful for what I feel like God putting me to, to, to have. Thank Him for material blessings, as I've already stated, for people in your life. Thank him for his promises. You know what? I had never heard until I was in my 20s the promises of God. I just thought the Bible was the Bible. I didn't know that it it applied to us today. I didn't know that the Scripture would work. Nobody taught me to confess the Word of God. Folks, maybe you've never been taught. The reason I read the Bible is not to impress God. How do you impress somebody who put the galaxies in place. Let me impress you. I read my Bible this morning. (laughs) And then God says, let me impress you. See that galaxy? I did that. Promises. Every day, if you follow me on Instagram, you follow me on Facebook, I'm putting something on there most of the time that is a promise of God. Now, you see it as a verse in a chapter in a book. I see it as a promise. And let me just say this. There, you can even, in this morning, I posted something out of Lamentations, which is not typically the first book in the Bible anybody reads. You know what I'm saying? They're lamenting. But inside Lamentations, there are nuggets of gold. In the midst of their suffering, the promises of God pop out. In the midst of your suffering, you need to find these verses and you need to declare them and say, God, you are not a man that you should lie. You are a faithful God. And whatever you have promised, you will do. I don't ever question guys, so what if you die and it don't happen? I got the ultimate promise. I'll be walking on streets of gold and golfing on plush greens. And riding a Harley, a holy Harley. Not a hog, a holy Harley. You say, there are going to be Harleys in heaven? Sure are. How do I know that? Because I've asked him. <laughs> He's already got mine. He's working on mine right now. It's going to be incredible. Holy hog. Kind of funny since the Jewish people don't eat pigs. Anyway. That was just a side note. (laughs) Thankful for salvation, which is a promise that all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I was having a conversation with a young man this past, just yesterday. And it was really, really precious because he's really working. I mean, I love it. When young people are are thinking and working and uh, on the things of God, he was talking to me about evolution and, of course, I've studied evolution, creation, and all of this, and, you know, Big Bang Theory. And, and a lot of people, Christians especially, get real dogmatic and say, well, you know, it couldn't be Big Bang. And God did this, and God did that. I wasn't there. And I said, let him talk. And I said, well, you know, I, I'm a creationist. I'm, I'm not an evolutionist. I'm a creationist. I believe that God made us in his image and his likeness. I said, but okay. I said, you know what? But I, I don't argue over this because really... Whether you believe that or not doesn't really matter because if God made a tadpole and I came out of it, he still made the tadpole. Now, I don't hear me say I'm an evolution. I'm not. But I'm just saying, if you really love people and you're thankful for them, there's a way to handle it. And I said, let me just say this to you. I said, I don't argue about much anymore with two degrees, a bachelor's, master's. I said, I'm not the most brilliant guy in the world, but I got a little bit of education under my belt. I said, here's one thing I'll tell you. Whether you believe Big Bang, evolution, creation, let me say this to you. Jesus Christ is the only way to the Father. Whether it was a bang or a birth, 
Jesus is the only way to God. And I said, if you believe that, we're good. See, see, we, we, we get so dogmatic that we've been taught interpretive doctrine, not, not the Bible. We, we have, and I appreciate all the, the effort that's been put into trying to create church doctrines that tell us what we believe and don't believe. You know, some churches have musical instruments, some don't. Some believe in the Holy Spirit's activity day, some don't. Some believe in tongues, some don't. Some believe in miracles, some don't. It's an interpretation, but the reality is, folks, listen to me. If you don't want a miracle, I'm okay with that. I want miracles. And so if you don't want them, that's fine. It's up to you. But I believe in miracles. I believe the Holy Spirit's active today. I believe it's the promise of God. When Jesus said, I'll leave another with you, I won't leave you orphaned. He's here. I can't see him, but he's here. And I know what's most important to me is not whether something banged or birthed, but what happens is this. At the end of life, there will be one question asked, and that is, do you believe in my Savior, my Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life for you? Did you repent of your sins? If the answer is yes, bang, bang, birth, birth, boom, boom. I've known people that have spent their entire life trying to disprove evolution. And I, I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm into creation. I believe God created man as an image of light. I believe that. But I'm not going to be separated from somebody I love because they disagree with me. Actually, I'm grateful for the conversation that sharpens me. You know, there are Christians who separate from one another over a theological difference. That does not represent Christ. There are, there are Christians who leave the church because they don't like what the pastor wears or the song leader sings or the nursery does. They leave the church and never come back. That is so shallow. That's barely, I, I, I have a hard time even calling somebody a Christian who does that. We are so spiritually spoiled that we allow simple, shallow things to separate us from our brothers and our sisters. Instead of saying, I'm so grateful that you challenged my thought. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect at this, but I'm learning and continuing to learn. I want to have conversation that brings us together. And even when we disagree, we can love one another. And, 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 and iron sharpens iron as one man sharpens another. I've been to Pittsburgh, and let me tell you, when iron is being made, there are sparks flying everywhere. It's a beautiful sight. It strengthens the iron. Be grateful. Be grateful. It's very simple. Be grateful. This week, think about this message. Let it marinate in your soul. When somebody mistreats you, go, you know, there's a lesson in here somewhere. I was telling this young man, I said, you know, what I've learned about criticism is if I'll dig deep enough, there's a truth in there that can help me. Now, I don't like it anymore than anybody else, but if somebody came up and said, you know, I am so thankful for you, but why don't you start using at the same time, what if? But negates everything you said before. I love you at the same time. I really would love to see you grow. I'd love to see you get better at the same time. I love you, but you're an idiot. I love you, but you're not doing what I'm doing. I love you, but... No, I love you. At the same time, I see that God's got a lot more to do with you, and I know he has great plans for your life. You start talking to your teenager like that, they think you got a hold of their gummies. <laughs> or your Red Bull. They'll be looking at you like, okay, mama, are you okay? You all right, dad? Son, at the same time, your room's a mess. At the same time, I know that God's going to work through that mess. See, that's just a grateful way to approach life. Is it easy? Not when your blood pressure shoots up 
and veins are in your neck. <laughs> Be grateful. I'm grateful for you. My prayer is not just for Mosaic, but for every church that people would be grateful for the house in which they serve and worship, grateful for their pastor and their leader. I did not want any of my kids to be in ministry because I found it to be very difficult. Now, I'm called, and that makes it doable for me. But if somebody said, what job, what would be the job you would least want? If it's difficult, it would be this one. I'm just being honest with you. Now, I love what I do, and you don't bother me anymore. Because <laughs> I don't let you bother me anymore. You don't bother me anymore. And that's not your problem if you're trying to bother me. And you say, well, I want to bother you. It's still my problem because I can respond to your bother in a way that will bother you. <laughs> when somebody's mean to you and say, I'll, you, you tell them you love them, you have just put water on their fire. You can't fight fire with fire. It just creates more fire. I wish I had, this church had enough money. I'd just go out and buy fire extinguishers and have you walk around with them going to work. What's this all about? Well, I'm going to put out fires today. Talk bad about me? <laughs> By the way, we have... A golf cart. I told you that earlier. Mike, thanks, man. We got a, we're getting a, are we getting another one? Are we getting another one, too? It, it's cool. We're legit now. You can't be a church without a golf cart, cameras, and lights. Oh, yeah, and Jesus. Just kidding. We probably ought to pray. Yeah, let's do that. God, you're awesome. We thank you so much for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that... Uh, in all of our weaknesses and all of our flaws and all of our sins and all of our mess. You love us unconditionally. You protect us as much as we will allow you. And so, Lord, I'm thankful today, first and foremost, that you loved me and that you love me and that you will always love me. I'm thankful for salvation, thankful for grace, thankful for mercy. Because as the Apostle Paul said, I look at my life and go, I'm the worst of all sinners. But by grace, I've been saved. Therefore, I am one incredibly grateful, happy person. And God, I pray for those who are struggling with their own lives and flaws and sins that you would... wrap your arms around them, and that in their soul, they would feel your squeeze. With every head bowed, every eye closed, I want to ask all of you to pray this with me. As I said earlier, the most important decision that any of us will ever make will be the decision to follow Christ, to accept Him and follow Him. So I want to ask everyone to pray this with me. Say, Father God, thank you so much for sending your only Son to suffer and die for my sin. Jesus, thank you for giving your life for me. Today I give my life to you. I repent of my sin and I call you Lord. I call you Savior. I call you friend. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want to ask you to text the word SAVE to 405-500-1310. It's the same number you text SERVE, MEMBER, SAVED. We get all of those that come through that same number, and it identifies each category. So right now, text the word SAVED to 405-500-1310. Let us know that you decided to be a follower of Jesus today. This time, we want to receive our tithes and offerings. You know, it's, it's really funny that uh, sometimes I think we're afraid to ask God for things because we're afraid that if He doesn't come through if you will, that it will cause us to have a certain attitude about God, that, that he's not big enough or he's not concerned enough or doesn't care enough. So many people don't ask God for things, and when they do, they ask once and they quit and they forget about it and they let it go. 
Be the person that keeps beating on the door until the father gets out of bed and comes and answers the door. Begin thanking him ahead of time. It will confuse hell. And this is not a joke. Last week, I got off stage, jumped off stage, went right down the right side, your left, my right. Two ladies approached me that I've known forever. I've been their pastor for over 20-some years total. And they said, we need a golf cart. We want a golf cart. I went, well, okay. I go to the lobby, and there's Mike. I don't even remember how we struck up the conversation, but he said, I've got one. We're not using it. You want it? Yes. They, I mean, you want somebody to pray for you, I can point the ladies out to you. I mean, it was bold. I'm thinking, you want to go? Well, I want one too, but you know how much they cost? <laughs> I want a lot of things before I want a golf cart, but evidently God didn't. God wanted a golf cart too, or we wouldn't have one. Childlike faith. You tell a kid you're going to do something, they just believe you. Well, we're God's kids. We need to believe him. Now, with that said, obedience is a big factor. That's why we do offerings every week. There's nothing closer to your heart than currency. Now, when I say yours, I'm talking about humanity. Everybody asks, how much money am I going to make? How much money am I going to make? And it's really interesting that the mafia probably has more money than ministry. So a lot of Christians think they can sit around and just ask God for money. The mafia goes out and gets it. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out and rob a store today. But what I am suggesting is that you go to God today and you say, God, you tell me what to do and I'll do it. And God says, well, then if you do what I told you to do, then you'll get what I told you you'd get. So people pray for money, but they don't obey God. Well, you can't do that. I mean, you can but you're going to be miserable for a long life with a long life. The Bible says bring the whole tithe in the storehouse. Given, it'll be given. And I always tell people, I don't mean to be mean, but I'm old enough to be a little cranky. And I'm just going to be cranky enough to tell you, if you're going to ask God for money, then you need to start giving. That's where it comes from. You don't ask for an orange grove unless you plant orange seeds. It'd be dumb for you to stand on 30 acres saying, I speak oranges over this land. Well, God's going to say, well, the minute you start sowing and you put some seed in the ground and cultivate it and water it, you may get some oranges. More than likely, you will. Same principle when it comes to giving. So if you want to give today, it's real simple. Text the word GIVE to 405-546-2226. 405-546-2226. Text the word GIVE. You can put a debit, credit card information in there. Simple. If you want to give uh, on the way out, there are Offering receptacles on the way out. You can give there. You can give online at mosaicokc.church. Some of you watching right now, you can just find the tab there and go to give and give right there. Or you can mail it to 5821 Northwest Expressway, OKC, OK, 73132. Again, thank you for your faithfulness to give and obey the Lord. It helps us help people. All right, let's stand. On your way out, if this is your first time here, we have a gift for you at our welcome kiosk. Please stop by there and get it. Also, May 11th, that's a Tuesday night, May 11th, we will be having, uh, a week from this Tuesday, a worship night. And, and we want to encourage the last worship night we have was off the chain, off the hook. I still don't know what that means, but that's what the kids say. So be here. Let's go out with a shout. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Stop.